Good morning, everybody. Happy Thursday. Welcome back to another live stream recording of the Engadget podcast. I'm senior editor Devendra Hardwar, and I'm joined today with our reviews editor, Sherlyn Lowe, to my right. Yes, this is working. <laughs> uh, our no podcast idea. producer, Ben Elman, diagonally down. And our special guest, uh, Tarek oh. Malik, editor in chief of space.com. Hey, Tarek. Hey, thanks for having us here. Yeah, thank you. Um, Tark's going to talk with us about the billionaire space race and, uh, you know, everything going on there. So I think that's going to be fun. And uh, thank you all for joining us on the live stream. Let's just check in on the stream. I got I you. I got here. you. Yeah. All right. Josh Sakteva says, good evening. Hi, good evening. Lucas Tang E. Hong says, good evening from SG, Singapore, which ah. is where I'm from, where Tarek's f some of the, f your, you know, you visit it often. Your family's there. That's some right. of your family is there. And... Um, <laughs> So, someone had a good question. Josh Sakdeva asked, mm -hmm. nothing earbuds review? I would just say that's all tuned. you. That's all you. Yeah, yeah. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. And then Gabriel, Gabriel, sorry, Gabriel says, anyone wondering where Velasco went? Uh, Velasco <laughs> disappeared. He's gone. Dead. He's dead to us. Uh, um, Tark, uh, Tark but, on your end, can you lower your volume a little? Because I think I'm hearing our bleed through. Sure. So just like your audio. Yeah, volume. your headphone volume. Yep. Yeah. Just a bit of feedback in it. Yep. Um, yeah, and then our regulars like Mark Dell, Jonathan <laughs> Anderson, Jedi Mind Trick on You, ACBC, Josh, I mentioned a couple times, uh, are here. So it's good to see you all again. And also hi to the new ones, new new guests. What's up, everybody? Yeah, Mark Dell called this the Ted Lasso fan cast, which is not wrong. It's true. But More Ted Lasso is coming next soon. Week. Coming soon, yes. yeah. Oh, so yeah. Wow, like, next soon. week. It's, uh, it's all happening so quickly. So for new people, uh, just so you know, this is our live stream of the podcast. We will be doing an actual recording of the Engadget podcast. We won't be able to chat with you during those sequences, uh, but we will stop and do some Q&A uh, in between segments right after we talk about all the space stuff. Uh, Tark is going to answer some questions with us. And then uh, we've got some other stuff. We've got Windows 365. We've got a bunch of news happening this week, too. But thank you all for joining us on another Thursday morning. Are you guys good to go? Uh, I am about to time up a story, and then I should be thing. good to Do go. your thing. But yeah, hello, everybody. Thank you, oh, Louis. It's so Louis very Knox glamorous. says he's trying to be regular in the comments. Oh. oh Please stay regular. Like Eat that. your fiber. <laughs> Take your Metamucil. Uh, yeah, that's... Uh... Used to have a user called Poop Twice a Day. Yay. <laughs> oh, yeah. We missed. Oh, we missed. Man. I poop he was twice. definitely I mean, regular. They were definitely just, regular. Yeah, just yeah. anyone. If you have an alt account <clears throat> with a funny name, just respond with that. We love that. <laughs> um, All right. Okay, so. uh, scheduling. Thank you. Uh, and... Just try to keep your account names uh, something we can actually say on air. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. I'm pretty that sure way. that YouTube might uh, like. <clears throat> censor some names but also uh yeah i don't want yeah to... if you want to be uh included in the podcast because occasionally we do bring in questions uh yeah yeah i'm not, I'm not gonna do you say, basically. an offensive name yeah all right i have <clears throat> timed out the story and i am good to go okay all right everybody billionaires in space windows in the cloud that's gonna be the title of this episode it all kind of sky. work together very nicely <clears throat> yes all right, we're going to kick things off. Let me just make sure everything is good. So many phones. Yeah, I have to mute all the phones. My recording looks like it's fine. Still mm -hmm, going. Mm -hmm. Tariq, you good? Yeah, I'm all great. Cool. Awesome. This will be fun, Lucy Goosey. Uh, I got a couple yeah. questions for you, but it, it, you're an expert in this space. So, yeah, I think you'll be fine. I feel, space, I feel a bit over that. I feel like I should have gotten like a nice space shirt or something like that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> space, space ship tie or something. You really like got to sell it. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, let's go in three, two, one. What's up, Internet? And welcome back to <clears throat> do that again. What's up, Internet? And welcome back to the Engadget podcast. I'm senior editor Devendra Hardwar. I'm reviews editor Sherlyn Lowe. This week, billionaires in space. Oy, oy, oy. Say it like pigs in space mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah. and windows in the cloud. We'll be chatting about the new space race between Virgin Galactic and uh, Jeff Bezos's Blue Origins. Uh, we have a special guest on who I'll introduce soon. And uh, we'll be chatting about Microsoft's new service, uh, Windows 365, Windows in the cloud. Kind of crazy. There's a lot to dive mm -hmm. into there. 
As always, if you're enjoying the Engadget podcast, please be sure to subscribe on your podcatcher of choice. Leave us a review on iTunes and uh, drop us an email at podcast at Engadget.com. You can also find us every Thursday on the Engadget YouTube channel, typically around 10 a.m. Eastern, where we live stream the show. So you could chat with us. We'll do some Q&A with the audience. And uh, that's always fun. So it's a fun, interactive experience. Join us if you can. Okay, I'm going to lead right into it. <clears throat> so earlier this weekend, <clears throat> so last weekend, Virgin Galactic made a very special launch. Uh, well, let me let me introduce it again. So last weekend, Richard Branson, the founder of Virgin Galactic, touched the mm. edge of space in the first fully crewed Virgin Galactic flight uh, to actually reach orbit. That's Unity 22. And this kicks off a wave of... Uh, news and you know it's a bit of a space race because jeff bezos's blue origins also mm -hmm. is going to be uh launching a tourist flight on july 20th we talked last week about the uh, the kind of like bad blood between them at this point so we want to break down what's going on and we brought on Tarek malik the editor-in-chief of space.com to help us figure out everything going on hey Tarek. hey how's it going thanks for having us here yeah no problem um Tarek, what is so what's going on? Can you give us like a, a brief sense of like what was so important about this Virgin Galactic fight, uh, flight? We've been hearing about it for years. There was like a very, you know, there was a, a crash, uh, I think around 2015 too. Like there, this is a long story that got us here. What's so important about this flight and what's happening now with this billionaire space race? Yeah, so, so to kind of understand where mm -hmm. Virgin Galactic is coming from, we have to go back in time about 17 years. And in 2004, in... Uh, in Mojave, California, you know, a uh, home to to test pilots and 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 aerospace researchers galore, there was a, a race for a private spaceship, and that race called the Ansari X Prize was won by a progenitor of Virgin Galactic's own ship called Spaceship One, and it was built by a different company, uh, Scaled Composites, and. Uh, Richard Branson was really taken by that, mm -hmm. and I believe he was there at the time uh, watching it happen. And he said, uh, as uh, as everyone was celebrating that win by um, uh, in that event, that he was going to found Virgin Galactic and he was going to launch a passenger space line. Uh, anyone that could afford a ticket would be able to go. Uh, back then, tickets were a little bit cheaper; they were like two hundred thousand. Now they're two hundred and fifty thousand. And hey, they could be launching by the end of that decade. Now that was yeah. 2004. <laughs> I remember us saying at the time, like Richard Branson, sure, bro, sure, whatever you're saying, yeah, consumer flights to space, uh, we'll believe it when we see it, right? And 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 Richard Branson, big showman, lot, yep. lots of deep pockets. You know, this is in, in 2004. SpaceX was just two years old. Blue Origin, working very quietly, was four mm -hmm. years old, mm -hmm. but no one really knew what they were doing. Uh, and uh, and so we saw over over the time them make uh, uh, a lot of successes like they rolled out the spacecraft uh it was called uh, enterprise a, a nod to nasa's first space shuttle and of course my favorite the uh uss enterprise up there <laughs> uh, and uh and and everything seemed to be going well uh, now they did have a test uh, uh on the ground uh kill three uh, employees of that company scaled composites which designed mm -hmm. spaceship two that was a setback to understand like what are they doing wrong uh, on on the ground and then in 2014 after uh, uh, a several rocket power tests uh, they had this fatal crash that nearly sidelined them uh, in which uh, basically a pilot one of the co-pilots uh, unlocked a, a, a mechanism in the tail too early mm -hmm. when the rocket engine was still on mm -hmm. and the spacecraft broke apart and it, cool. it was just a, a tragic accident one pilot killed one seriously injured uh, it could have uh, basically canceled the company they could have had to mm -hmm. shut down because of that they were able to un understand like what went wrong identify how to fix it so now that can't ever happen again that mechanism cannot physically be unlocked by a pilot early uh and they built a new ship that's unity with all of these new safety enhancements they, they in that time uh they they began testing it they moved to new mexico uh in the the deserts near truth or consequences and mm -hmm. uh, las cruces there's a spaceport there out in the middle of the desert called spaceport america and they built it looks like a ufo if you're if you see it <laughs> from above it's, right. it's this weird kind of undulating disc shaped thing there's a mm -hmm. big hangar uh, on the bottom floor for uh, spaceship two and it's huge carrier plane mm -hmm. uh yeah. white knight uh to uh Richard Branson named it after his mother, that carrier plane, uh, VMS Eve. And, mm -hmm. uh, and then on top is a world-class kind of flight terminal, which I guess first-class passengers would expect sure. if they're paying $250,000. This so, is the world's first consumer spaceport, 
basically, it, right? It's, it, it's an airport, but for space. Exactly, exactly. Mm-hmm. So, so they call it Gateway to Space, this terminal, like lots of world-class facilities. Uh, apparently not a hotel yet, but I, I, you could imagine <laughs> that, that might be coming. So the stage was really set. And mm-hmm. at Space.com, we have been writing since the early 2000s that this next year could be the year yeah. for commercial spaceflight. <laughs> this, was, is your, was, this is your white whale, basically. Was, like, you guys have been joke. following this forever. Yeah, It, it was almost a running joke. It's like, are we going to write that story again this year? And it's like, well, we're, they, they could do it this year. Let's, mm-hmm. let's try and uh, and what's happened is that tw- I can say definitively now, I feel comfortable saying mm-hmm. it, that 2021 is the year that true commercial space flight is 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 here because we've gotten to a point where now now Virgin Galactic has launched their first fully crewed flight, not just test pilots, not mm-hmm. just uh, engineers, although there were some on this flight. Uh, yeah. But I they, mean, the founder they, of the company, that the seems like a, a big deal. Yeah. Astronaut. Zero zero one is yeah. Richard Branson's number at the company, mm-hmm. so he's the first one to go, uh, and uh, and then we have this whole race that came up because while it was exciting to see Virgin Galactic uh, make this big milestone, and they say that they could yeah. uh, launch passengers as early as twenty twenty two now, um, mm-hmm. I heard Ashton Kutcher might actually have a, a flight too, and Elon Musk, who apparently has put a d- deposit down too. Yep. Um, they weren't the first ones to announce they were going to launch people this year. Uh, in May, actually, in May, Jeff Bezos and his Blue Origin company said, hey, everyone, we're going to launch uh, uh, Jeff Bezos. Or he said, we're going to launch our first crude flight uh, mm-hmm. on July 20th. And then later they, they <laughs> launched a, uh, an auction to sell off seats to go. Then they said Jeff right. Bezos is going to go. Then they said uh, 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 an aerospace or a- aviation pioneer, Wally Funk, is going to go. And then on July 1st, when we knew all of those details and they'd sold the trip for $28 million or so, uh, Virgin Galactic says, we're going to launch Richard Branson to space. Love it. <laughs> so, Love it. A, a, full, a full nine days earlier, uh, 10 days earlier, and, and stealing the thunder away. So I, can, I, would, is... I would pay to see Jeff Bezos at that moment when he saw that <laughs> news. Like, man, because he he's also he stepped down from being Amazon CEO. Right. Like he Mm -hmm. I I think he kind of did things like just in case anything bad happens, Amazon doesn't like fall apart. Uh, But he's no longer a CEO. Right. He's a chairman or he's on the board um, because he's fully focused on his rockets now, his uh, shiny (laughs) rockets. Yeah, that's right. That's right. You know, and also because, you know, Blue Origin had been they had this really uh, uh, kind of steady, but maybe not launching as quickly as 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 rocket fans, we would like, because everyone, everyone loves to see rockets go up and down over and over, you know, uh, uh, n- different kinds of vehicles launching into space. Uh, and we, I think maybe we got a bit uh, uh, spoiled by SpaceX launching yeah. a rocket every, every week or sometimes right, twice a week. Right. Uh, and, and so, so we, we, we were wondering like what's going on with this, this flight program. Now Blue Origin has launched this vehicle 15 times, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, the same one over and over again. Uh, and so, so we're, we're, ex- we're, we expect it, you know, if they feel that it's safe enough uh, mm-hmm. that, okay, yeah, this is going to go uh, just fine. In fact, back in April, they launched what they call the astronaut dress rehearsal, where they had people walk up the seven flights of stairs. There isn't an elevator at <laughs> SpaceX's, or uh-huh. pardon me, at Blue Origins launch pad. Uh, there's a, a seven a story uh, staircase. That Listen, I lived in New York. Up. I know what that's like. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Well, but this is like an ultimate walk up that's going to kick yeah. you off the planet, I suppose. Um, <laughs> and uh, uh, and so they they had astronauts. Uh, their 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 test astronauts go inside, sit inside, kind of do all the things you would do before countdown, and then before launch they got off and they launched the rocket. It went fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, and when it landed, they had astronauts get back inside as if they just landed and go through all of the motions again. Mm-hmm. Um, that was a, a, a flawless flight. When, when, when they, they did it. And so we expect to see something like that now. The big question, and this is something that I'm very eager to see in this kind of billionaire matchup of whose space company is going to, pro- to get the, best, the most customers, is when we saw Virgin Galactic's big launch, we saw a lot of pomp and circum- uh, a lot of uh, uh, flair about what that experience as a customer is right. going to be like, you know, you've got you've got your your personal spacesuits, you've got mm-hmm. uh, from Under Armour, right? You have you mm-hmm. have your your Land Rover uh, drive uh, to the uh, to the spaceport. Um, uh, you know, we we already talked about their their really awesome terminal, uh, and then you have this brand new ship where which has a, a cabin with a, a tailored seat, and you can float around. Mm-hmm. Um, we know now what that looks like uh, for a passenger. We really mm-hmm. don't. For Blue Origin, I mean they well, they have. It's, it's also like very different ships, right? Can can you they, just like break that down really quickly? Like Blue Origin is a rocket. When you imagine right. a rocket, that that is mm-hmm. what it is. The Virgin Galactic ship 
is a space plane. You know, it looks yeah. it just looks like a very fancy plane. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so 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 this is this has actually added some tension between these two mm -hmm. companies. Uh, we actually saw before the Virgin Galactic uh, launch last, uh, uh, <laughs> last I think like week, a few days yeah. before that that Blue Origin kind of put put a couple of infographics out to take a little a little swipe uh -huh. uh, at, at Virgin Galactic. They did cheer them on and laud their success and sent congratulations, but it's clear that they they are offering a different product. So we'll start with Virgin mm -hmm. Galactic, as you mentioned. It's a it's a space plane that is tucked underneath the belly of a carrier plane, and they mm -hmm. it basically takes off from a runway goes up to about 50,000 feet and there mm -hmm. uh, the pilots on the carrier plane drop it 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 kind of goes in free fall for a few seconds lights a rocket motor at the back it's a hybrid uh, uh, engine that uses kind of liquid mm -hmm. and solid propellant to go into space that rockets away then they turn it the pilots aboard make it go straight up it can it can cross a 50 mile border that mm -hmm. NASA and the FAA and the US military all cite as the border of space uh, mm -hmm. and for Branson's flight, he got about 53 miles up. Yeah. Uh, they get about four minutes of weightlessness. They can get out, uh, move about the cabin, float around, look out all these round portals that are all around the, 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 the cabin. Uh, and then they get back in, they buckle in, and then they glide back to a runway landing at the same place that they took off from. So they can kind of go have a drink uh -huh. at their terminal have a big so party th this whole thing is very it lasts what 15 minutes like what is the length it, of this flight right it's a it's about an hour and a half right okay. so so it's an it's an, an hour or so to get up to altitude mm -hmm. uh, uh and then uh they they wait and then they they launch it and then about a half an hour after that they're they're back on the ground gliding and then a little bit longer for the, the carrier plane to get back a, as well so uh you get a kind of a nice day outing out sure the Blue Origin experience is about 11 minutes because it's a mm -hmm. rocket. So right. in West Texas now, this is a, a, a really remote part of Texas. The nearest town mm -hmm. is Van Horn. Um, they have built this test facility with a launch pad and a, a landing pad. And the rocket, mm -hmm. as I mentioned, is seven stories uh, tall. And on the top <laughs> is a capsule, much like NASA's uh, uh, early uh, Mercury, uh, Gemini, and Apollo vehicles and uh, SpaceX's Dragon. Uh, capsule. Mm -hmm. It also does not go all the way to orbit, but it actually goes a lot higher than Virgin Galactic. So this this rocket can launch vertically with the capsule mm -hmm. on top and the astronauts on board. Um, it launches them up above a 62 mile altitude. Now that is an internationally recognized yeah. border for where space mm -hmm. begins and the effects of the atmosphere are negligible. The, uh, the capsule separates from the rocket uh, booster and it keeps going up on a ballistic trajectory like you've thrown a softball basically and the booster comes back to the earth lands on, vertically on a on a on a landing pad and then space uh blue origin can kind of go out uh clean it up gas it up again and get it ready for the next flight the capsule keeps going up hits mm -hmm. it's that that kind of uh, physical apex and then falls back down it has a heat shield like like Sp uh, spacex and nasa and it touches down on the ground so it's got some retro rockets uh uh, much like what Russia's Soyuz capsules do with these parachutes. Uh, and then Blue Origin runs out with some uh, trucks to recover the crew, get them out. And then I'm sure that they have a, a party after it. Mm -hmm. There isn't a great big <laughs> world, world class terminal uh, out there yet, uh, you know, because uh, uh, Blue Origin hasn't built one. They've been focusing on getting right. the rocket ready. Um, mm -hmm. So so we're going to see uh, on July 20th with that flight what what that experience is going to be like for mm -hmm. these people. And, and uh, they auctioned off. So launching on this flight, because that, that'll last 11 minutes. They'll have about three, maybe four minutes of weightlessness as well. They have mm -hmm. the biggest windows, by the way, Blue Origin, uh, ever to fly in space. It's like a floor to ceiling wow. window, but on a spaceship. <laughs> and and uh, there's one of those at every seat on, on, on the vehicle. That, so that was in the like uh, comparison chart. Like, yeah, uh, we, we got big windows. <laughs> Yeah, and, and so you would you would think yeah. you would, you would think that that wouldn't be a big deal, right? But, you know, if 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 you think you know, I'm on this really short flight. Mm -hmm. um, I I want to see what Earth looks like. It's going to be really easy because yep. the window is right there. You don't have to unbuckle right. and then look at. Oh, do I want to look at this little round window or this round window? It's clear, you know, mm -hmm. where 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 to look. Um, and and we're sure that there's probably going to be some other amenities. Like right. both of these companies have live recording going on. They're recording everyone's reactions. <laughs> uh, you can expect that the customers are going to get some tailored uh, uh, videos and other souvenirs of their experience. Um, but they are truly different vehicles. Mm -hmm. uh, they right. have uh, they're a different experience. And I I can see the jet set folks that really want to rack up uh, uh, both clout and virgin and just points. Yeah, yeah. That you could you could <laughs> see them. You know, booking a trip 
uh-huh. uh, on both of these things and then comparing them after a flight. <laughs> you know, Charles Simone, yeah, you mentioned Windows earlier. Charles mm-hmm. Simone booked not one but two trips to orbit mm-hmm. on the International mm-hmm. Space Station with Russia wow. and, and a company called Space Adventures. So there are people that want to do it more than once. Mm-hmm. And both of these companies with their reusable uh, aspects kind of are are poised to do that. SpaceX as well. well. You know, they we haven't we've talked mostly about Virgin Galactic and Blue Origin, but Elon Musk has already been launching people into orbit, not right, just sixty two right. miles to the ISS, miles, yeah, to the International Space Station. He's booked a flight mm-hmm. uh, for September fifteenth to launch another billionaire, Jared <laughs> Isaacman, and and three other civilians uh, into orbit, not to the space station. They're just going right. to stay in orbit for for about a, uh, five days or so uh, and come back. But that is a, a sea change now because mm-hmm. all other private orbital flights have gone to the space station were launched by Russia on their Soyuz vehicle and were brokered by a U.S. company. This is a company not just brokering the deal, but inviting them out, giving them space yeah, use, yeah. launching them into orbit. It's a full uh, service kind of experience. Uh, Tarek, I have, a, I have a many follow-up questions, but I want to ask her, do, do you have I anything you want to jump yeah. in? Yeah. <laughs> I have two, at least two follow-up questions for mm-hmm. Tariq. One thing is, I, I didn't know if you were building to this, but the price difference between the two, right? I mean, they're very mm-hmm. different experiences, but how much does each cost? So that's, that's, that is that's that is actually the $250,000 question, right. Sherilyn. Because right. we, we, we know for a long time that uh, Virgin Galactic was at the two hundred dollars to $250,000 uh, right. uh, range. That, that price could change over time. They might uh, uh, They might increase it. You know, you can kind of jump ahead in line if you pay Mm -hmm. an extra service fee because they do have hundreds of reservations. We don't know how much uh, Blue Origin is going to charge. They auctioned off the seat to space with Jeff Bezos, his brother, and uh, and Wally Funk, uh, one of Mm -hmm. the Mercury 13 uh, uh, women who who tested to be an astronaut. Uh, That seat sold for $28 million. Right. That's that's a (laughs) lot. Huge disparity, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So and 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 Blue Origin used that money to basically give 19 different charities a million dollars each. Jeff Bezos just okay. uh, uh, gave the Smithsonian 200 million dollars yep. uh, uh, in in a gift for 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 uh, STEM education and science and and the museum's refurbishment. But we don't know how much the actual seats are going to cost, all right? Because right. Jeff Bezos right. most likely not going to be on every flight, um, and yeah. so so I think that that's kind of the question that we want to see mm-hmm. for. SpaceX, a trip to orbit, we know that a, a rocket launch costs on the average between 62 and maybe $70 million. Uh, that's kind mm-hmm. of what they sell those flights for. Uh, probably more with insurance mm-hmm. and, uh, and then also more if you're going to have food, life support, you got to pay for that air <laughs> and that water. NASA, you know, themselves also have kind of breakdown costs for what that stuff is going to cost. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, so we don't really know exactly how much that, and Jared Isaacman, the billionaire that, that bought this inspiration for a mission that's launching in September is not telling either. So okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I should also point out that while we've been talking about these, there is another billionaire, um, mm-hmm. Yusaki Mezawa in Japan, who has put down some kind of a down payment or bought an entire Starship flight, which is <laughs> SpaceX's mega rocket that they're right. building wow. in South Texas. And that one is to go around the moon. And we don't know how much that costs either. But if they're launching a mission around the moon, it must be in the billions. Mm-hmm. So um, so lots, I, those are kind of the pay scale. You go from 250000 uh-huh. yeah, to at least $28 million if you really want a super high tech <laughs> with, with the richest man on the planet. Uh, to some sort of subset of sixty to seventy million yeah. to go to orbit, like Bond uh, villain territories, to the uh, upper end, to yeah. billions of dollars to go around the moon. So, yeah. uh, so that, wow. that's where we are right now. Joe. My my main yeah. question is just what what does this all mean, right? Because the last space race between you know Russia and America was mainly for what national pride uh, to see who gets there first, who could like lead in technology following uh, in the post war era. This one is rich people hanging out in space. So I fail to get as excited, I guess, uh, uh, reading about like NASA's uh, innovations back in the day. But what is Virgin Galactic trying to accomplish here versus what Blue Origin is and what SpaceX is? Uh, SpaceX is, I feel like they have very different goals, right? Like Blue Origins was always about more than just space tourism, whereas Virgin Galactic was space tourism uh, as the impetus, right? That's right. In fact, in fact, uh, just uh, I think at the core, because these are companies, yep. they want to be able to have a product that they can sell to 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 make money. But they do have all all three of them, uh, uh, Blue Origin, Virgin Galactic, and and SpaceX have very different missions. Now, back mm-hmm. in the early days of, of of space travel, you have this race between then the United States 
and the USSR. Um, you know, where uh, both com- both countries want want missiles, they want rockets, they want to be able to launch uh, weapons uh, everywhere, and to do that, you need really powerful rockets. Uh, so that is really kind of the impetus of where that came from. It was national security, it was national pride, uh, it was um, uh, uh, just you know to to really show what each country could do. Uh, and then they reached the moon, and then that kind of stopped. And uh, and they went kind of very divergent ways where NASA built a space shuttle and then the, uh, uh, and then Russia built a space stations. Mm-hmm, and then now mm-hmm. they're they're working together on a space station and everyone wants to go back to the moon. Um, so what we saw see now is we see companies that see uh, they, they see that there are people out there who have the means and the interest to fly in space and they want to fill that niche. Uh, and they want to fill it in different ways because Virgin Galactic, Richard Branson, they want to. They, he's known for for delivering experiences with Virgin uh, Atlantic, with mm-hmm. uh, uh, music and and whatnot uh, of a very uh, tailored uh, mm-hmm. approach. Right, you know, right. people know what they're going to get from that brand, so mm-hmm. he can make a space line for passenger flight that will carry that brand into space yeah. and now high end every... adventure is kind of in his brand for a while. Right. Yeah, exactly. So that, that's kind of where he's coming from. Now he, he did say that he's always wanted to fly in space. This was a dream of his yep. and you know, a ticket, a two, while it's, while it still is a substantial amount of money, $250,000 is much less than what any other private trip to space has gone, right. uh, has gone to date. So, so, you know, he, and he can do it at scale. Now he's building another spaceship. Uh, and, and the idea is to turn that into a a, a, a a really profitable company. They are public now too. They did go public uh, in this whole time. And you can see them franchising that out to maybe not just launching out of New Mexico, but they could do it right, from Sweden. Right. They could do it from Singapore. You know, eventually be- like it could be flights to these other places, right? Like not just going up and down, but going from New Mexico to Singapore or something really quickly. Right. E- exactly. Exactly. For, for again, that really high end, you know, we, yeah, yeah. we had, uh, the, the Virgin Galactic actually has announced plans for a new supersonic jet to kind of be the interim level mm-hmm. uh, to, to to get there too. Now on Blue Origin side, uh, uh, Jeff Bezos he has like a personal mission to have like a million people living in space yes. in in the future. He wants uh-huh. this giant. They call it an O'Neill space station. You can imagine a giant soda can like miles and miles long, where mm-hmm. people live on the inside skin of that can uh, in time. It's it's purely out of science fiction, but yeah. something that is a really major goal to shoot to. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and it's a very inspirational goal. And he has billions and billions of dollars in re- the, the pockets to be able to fund that. So that's where he has been coming from. Mm-hmm. And if, 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 if he needs to have a, a profitable uh, uh, a feeder for that, that dream, that's yeah. what, that's what Blue Origin is trying to do. And isn't and, that ultimate, the ultimate goal, though, right? It's not just putting people in a can in space. It's like, what are you going to do with those people? And we've, I believe we've heard Jeff Bezos talk about asteroid mining before. I feel like that is the next big uh, thing that the super rich are going to go after because we're, we're running out of resources here on Earth. Rare Earth minerals is like a big reason we're having such a chip shortage right now. So if they can go to space and get stuff like that is infinite money is is that a part of it um you know that, that, in, in the short term long term yeah bo- both both mm-hmm. jeff bezos and elon musk have said yeah that they have kind of two two different visions well elon musk has been really singular about his mm-hmm. they want a, a, pl- a place in space where humanity can live and thrive so that there's another place in space where humanity is living and thriving uh you know just just so that there's like a backup right now yeah. so they <laughs> they would like to have a, a way to kind of uh 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 to, to at least serve a part to to keeping the species going if an asteroid hits, if there's some other sure, kind of mega sure. disaster, that kind of thing. Um, but in order to to really make that pay for itself, there are there is a lot of interest in in mining space. Elon Musk wants to put build a city on the moon or on Mars. Uh, that mm-hmm. has been his goal from the founding of SpaceX. Is he wants people, he wants a colony or a, a settlement go. on Mars. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, and in the other companies are looking at the moon where they can use those resources that are a little closer to home uh, and hopefully develop new technologies to use them, uh, to use it as a springboard uh, to to uh, either mine those resources like you were just mm-hmm. talking uh, mm-hmm. about and bring them back to Earth or use them to build other things in right. space that can then right. 
uh, drive some sort of new economy. Uh, there's a lot of talk about helium three on the moon. You might yep. have heard that, where they they say, oh yeah, we can use this as a, <laughs> a cheap nuclear fusion fuel. We can't do fusion right now, mm -hmm. uh, but they know that it's there. Yeah. And if they can do that and make cheaper energy, then we might all be able to benefit from that. I, I think um, like Blue Origin, like it, yeah, it just doesn't seem like tourism is the main goal for sure. And it's it's kind of like what Bezos did with Amazon Web Services in a way, investing in a cloud, right? Investing in a ton of servers before a cloud-based infrastructure and, you know, people were running systems on the cloud, like before that really existed. And that put him in a good place to to basically power the internet, right? So it seems like that's where we're kind of headed. Um, there was a viral thread going on, uh, you know, uh, on Twitter yep. about like, are billionaires just planning to leave a ruined earth? Is kind of, is that what's happening here? What is your thought on that? Because I, I think it's a lot more complex than that, but uh, let me know what you think, Tark. Yeah, I, I, I think that, that there, there is, there is a, a high visibility because these are billionaires, yeah. right? Uh, that they, that they want to, to get off the planet and leave us all behind. That was the whole plot of that movie Elysium with Matt Damon, yes. right? Yes. Where yes. everyone lived on an O'Neill cylinder space station yeah. while the rest of us were, were, were kind of scrambling around on earth below. But I really, I don't think that that's the case. I think that there is both a, a business uh, 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 driver to these companies where they are very accomplished uh, entrepreneurs in different fields. And they, mm -hmm. they all have kind of con been converging on this one field as the next big step to do different things. You know, for Jeff Bezos, he sees it as, uh, as you mentioned, getting kind of on that ground floor to develop the infrastructure needed to a, a higher economy in mm -hmm. space. He's actually been competing to offer what he calls delivery services to the moon. Uh, and Amazon is really great at that. Sure. So so <laughs> uh, the odds are they're going to get there one way or another. Uh, yeah. and, um, and so, so you know, we, we can see that they're, they're really kind of interested in that. At the same mm -hmm. point, they are, they are people who have all expressed a serious desire to go to space and and so there is i think a, a driving force to have that experience yeah just probably because they can right yeah it, exactly probably more than once right mm -hmm. and if if i was a billionaire and i really wanted to go to space and there was no one that could get me there and i mm -hmm. had all of these resources it it's not a giant leap to say you know what if sure. no one's going to get me there maybe i can get myself there yeah and, I, and I, I have to right ask people. I have to ask about, I guess, the fairness of it, because uh, you look back to the to the last space race, too. There was a lot of conversation about like, hey, it's it's great. You're spending billions of dollars, uh, you know, beating Russia and getting people to the moon. But it seemed like first of all, it, it seemed like the people going to the moon, uh, the people going to space were basically, you know, white professionals, everybody on Earth. Um, the people, the other folks in America, black and brown folks, people who weren't super rich or super uh, like astronauts, uh, were still struggling to get by. Uh, we were still dealing with a lot of issues on the ground floor. Today, it seems even worse because mm -hmm. the effects of climate change are everywhere now. Like I just saw a news report about another heat wave coming to the Pacific Northwest that looks just as bad as the one that hit a couple of weeks ago. The world isn't really prepared for like what is happening to us. Meanwhile, these billionaires are out there just like playing with their rockets, uh, dumping more fuel into our atmosphere. Like it, it just seems a little unfair and maybe like the optics aren't so great right now. Should they be doing other things alongside this? Like it's great. Jeff Bezos gave some money to the Smithsonian. That money is going to be a tax write off for him. You know, should he just be paying his taxes like he should? Uh, is is that a better solution? I don't know where you come down this start. I, I think I think it's a real fair point. And and as you mentioned, this is an argument that has dogged space travel since yep. the dawn of the space age. Why are we spending all this money in space when we could be spending it on the ground? And you know, NASA's retort has always been every single dollar that we spend in space, we're actually spending on Earth with the people yep. that they they hire, the 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 technology transfers that I mean, you and I are talking uh, using technology yes. that was developed that came out of that. And then another company is like, hey, we could use this to make uh, a video camera that you can put in a computer, you know, and, and talk over, over a satellite communication. That's really great that we have all of that stuff. It clearly has made communications better. Um, mm -hmm. I can't, you know, we, especially in this last year with where, where, where we've been in a pandemic, my family is uh, in California and Singapore. I haven't seen them in a year and a half. Mm -hmm. And we've been able to kind of keep that connection. I really, that's like one uh, uh, NASA calls them spinoffs that I really appreciate, but there is for these billionaires, a very clear optics issue for where right. they're spending all of their money 
Uh, well, not all of it, right? We can't, well, I don't think yeah. it's, it, it may not even be be a, what's a in the couch for them. Yeah, um, they're spending uh, uh, they're spending all of this money uh, on these programs now. Elon Musk, you know, he 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 has uh, 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 his own approach where he's he's driving Tesla with electric cars. He has a solar company, so he he has trying been putting a lot of effort into that part of it because he he feels that we need to have that kind of uh, sustainable uh, energy uh, and and. Uh, consumption a process going forward. Uh, Jeff Bezos, you know, one of the reasons he did step down from Amazon was so that he could explore other projects. And it would not surprise right. me if there is some sort of climate initiative that uh, that does come out of, of that. But we do need to wait and see. Um, and for Virgin Galactic, uh, uh, one of the things that uh, the earlier claims that came out in the very early days of the company was that they were going to try to have a green fuel. They've kind of backed off that yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and and we're sure that there are some philanthropic work. I mean, Jeff Bezos and um, and uh, Richard Branson have announced that they're they are going to be giving away flights uh, for these for these trips so that they can inspire uh, a new generation of younger people to go in space. I, we saw with just the makeup of the crew uh, that that diversity is is kind of key. Uh, to to that, and um, we saw that also with NASA's new push to go to the moon as well. They mm-hmm. had, they announced a cadre of astronauts uh, recently, and it is a, one of the most diverse groups that I've ever seen uh, for mm-hmm. any program going yeah. forward. I, I, th- uh, I think one big difference here too is like when NASA does something and they're investing so much to do future missions, it is also for the public good, right? Exactly. Like it is for it eventually helps America it could help people all over the world. Like so much of our technology now has come out of the original space program. If that was a private space race, uh, no, that this, never yeah, would have happened. This is really key. This is really yeah. key too, because as as a citizen or as just a member of the public, because you don't yeah. have to be a citizen, you can log on and you can you can request information or or details from any kind of NASA funded study, um, and and learn. You know, maybe if it's just for your own personal yeah. enjoyment, you can learn about it. Uh, you, NASA has these agreements that they they have in place where they can share kind of their learnings from technology. These companies have all benefited from yes. that process. Uh, uh, and, and so uh, so there is that very clear trade-off. One of the biggest worries uh, for me as a reporter was that once we shifted into this commercial model, that the level of access and transparency was going to drop off a cliff. Now, we haven't seen mm-hmm. that uh, like completely fall off where they're doing things Quietly, but you know, when, when Blue Origin was developing this New Shepard vehicle, they would launch test flights and announce it months later to say, "Hey, look what we did!" You know, because no one was able to watch them because they were off in the the deep desert. Um, now, be, because they have contracts with NASA, because they have agreements to fly people in space, which has safety evaluations, they have to have a measure of public transparency that we can now follow to know when SpaceX is going to test their rocket in in Texas near the community because they have to make announcements for that. But mm-hmm. any new technologies that these companies develop for themselves to build these, these vehicles are their technologies now. And so that, that technology spinoff may not be as free as what we've seen with, with NASA. You know, we may not get, yeah. Oh, yeah, we, we may, we may not get um, the super Uber like internet of the future that SpaceX's Starlink might use unless they license that for a fee or or the you're you're paying a service for them uh as we've seen with 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 their new their new uh, internet program uh that that they've been launching pretty prolifically in the last year <laughs> so mm-hmm. <laughs> uh so that is something that we're going to want to watch because while while right now it's just these trips to space and maybe their heat shield technology or or their life support system. It, you know, as more and more people are going to be living and working in space, that's stuff that's going to govern how those folks live, how they survive in space, uh, who's delivering the food that they might need to go into space. Or if yeah. I'm living in a, a remote part of the world, uh, how I get access to the, to the services that I need uh, through this infrastructure that is now a, a, you know, a, a, licensed, a licensed piece of technology by a billion, billion dollar company. We'll we'll see, and you know what? We'll be we'll be keeping an eye on all this news. I just like the skeptical side of me is like, I don't trust these billionaires. I wish they were paying taxes. I wish they were like helping, trying to help the world, uh, especially while so many things are literally on fire. But you know what, Tark? I'd love to have you back on uh, as we get more news and more announcements from these folks. And uh, yes. yeah, we will we'll dive more into this I, down the line. Yeah, I have a sense that Tark, you you will have greater <laughs> access to some of these trips than Ooh. than the rest of us with with your coverage and everything so 
But, I'm sure we will interview you soon about but, one of but, these trips. <laughs> That's the one of the one of the greatest things. Like, I, I'm like the rocket person at, at mm-hmm. space.com. I'm everyone knows that I love all the different ships, and right. it's 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 really exciting to kind of live in a time where there isn't just one way to get into space or two mm-hmm. from two different com- companies, but you've got all these these different designs of ways to get into space. There's new new companies coming up every time to to develop something new. It is something to watch. Uh, but yeah, uh, Shalom, you're right. I, I need to maybe they'll have like a a, a coupon day. I, I yeah, could, uh, I was like, when when are you know. going, and when do what will you pick as your first trip, Blue Origin or Virgin <laughs> Galactic? Whoever whoever signs me first and uh, and lets me sign the waiver. So absolutely. <laughs> so Tark, I'm gonna wrap you here just for the audio. Do you want to stick around for like ten minutes to just answer questions from the from the chat room? Yeah, that sounds great. I don't know what your time limit is. Okay, let's wrap you and then just stick around. <clears throat> Thanks. So Tarek, thank you so much for joining us on the Engadget podcast. Where can we find your work on the internet these days? Well, you can find us. Well, thank thank you for having us. I had a great Mm -hmm. time. I could talk about space all day. Yeah, yeah, uh, I I love talking about space. I I actually do at (laughs) space.com where you can find us and and our our, our entire uh, team. Uh, I'm on Twitter at Tarek J. Malik as well. And you can follow uh, space.com on Twitter and Facebook as well. So we hope to see you there. Awesome. Thank you. And All right. right for okay. Bad. Yeah. So we're I had to block yeah. somebody who's going crazy in the chat room. Sorry, folks. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, so what about a, a like an Amazon Prime Day Blue Origin coupon? Right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Oh. So Please. you can see all that stuff. They, they, they clearly have that infrastructure all set up for that. They Please. have some like <laughs> five digit items on Amazon, don't they? No, so, you can like... buy a car. You can buy like a a very expensive car. People in the chat room, if you have any questions for Tark or us, uh, be yes. Tark, because now Tark is, is expert here. Now's the time. Just drop yep, them in. Now I, is the I, time to yeah. ask your space questions to a space, space. expert. Like, wow. <laughs> Look at Tark. F- fun fact: Tark has interviewed Buzz Aldrin several times at this point. Oh, right? nice. Uh, Tark. Yeah, we had Elon Musk in our offices years ago too. Oh, wow. That's cool. I cool. wasn't That's there for that. Cool. So, and Tark and I used to work together. So, mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. Buzz, when Buzz, w- was it your first interview with Buzz when he came to our office? No, I, I had spoken to him a few times before that too for okay. some books that he had put out. Gosh, but God, when God. Buzz Aldrin walked into the office <laughs> that day, oh, there was everybody such a must buzz. have been crazy. <laughs> Tark, have you seen so, the movie so Ad buzz? Astra? Yes. Yeah. So I've yeah. seen them all. I have yeah. very different feels <laughs> yeah. about. I feel all like them, Ad Astra so. is the one that gets my like fears about what uh, you know commercial space is. Like an Applebee's on the moon. That's just where we're headed, right? Oh man, yeah, the, subway just the on worst the moon of America. One was so depressing. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, if the, you shouldn't watch uh, the Adventures of Pluto Nash. Then after that, because, I definitely, uh, I definitely basically, definitely it's like Vegas on the moon. And uh, that, I mean, uh, who knows? That's going to be probably a little more realistic. But <laughs> I love Ad Astra as a movie. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's questions? do some mm-hmm. silly comments yeah. first and then some more substantive comments. So Gabriel gets the Combo Commenter Award. I uh, took two down. First, they <laughs> said um, that on the Blue Origin rockets, they're going to force you to watch the Tomorrow War as you ascend mm-hmm. into space. <laughs> oh, my God. I'll yep. talk more about that later. Just like put that, yep. that right in front of your face and you can't do anything. <laughs> and Chris Pratt uh, sits next to you and just goes like, are you watching? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like that part. I, I, I loved that part. Yeah. Um, Am I your Gabriel... favorite, Chris? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And then Gabriel also said, honestly, just send Grimes to space so we can get her space symphony a la the fifth element. I mean, yes, yes Grimes course. in space. Uh, oh, Grimes please. being, Grimes, people have often called uh, Grimes Elon Musk's wife. They are not married. They are nope. simply domestic partners. Um, yep. Uh, Elon Musk, Elon Musk has, uh, many children. I think that yes, Elon yeah, Musk might... is the baby daddy, basically. Yeah. There, there, there might be a problem if, if if Blue Origin launches Grimes to space before space ends. So, yeah. So we, we don't see how that goes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, so all of this is actually just to get Grimes to space. <laughs> all, like all... <laughs> Regardless, three of these she knows projects. what she's doing. Okay, she got yeah. to get to space. So, um, then we've got a more substantive comment from uh, Sir Dirty that says, "So all these three men are using our tech taxpayer funded mm-hmm. loans to get to space. Think yep. about that. Uh, <laughs> has anyone done better reporting on the tax paychecks or grants they get? So, I leave this to you, Tarek." How many, how are you aware of how much or if they are getting any taxpayer funded um, subsidies or something? I have heard a lot about SpaceX and um, taxpayer funding. They are closely related to 
NASA, mm -hmm. but tell me more about these other companies. Yeah, so 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 basically, each of these companies has received uh, funding because they have competed for NASA contracts in the past. Mm -hmm. So so they they received uh, funding for for kind of engine development. Blue Origin, for example, has has some of that. They also have all been competing uh, for different services that NASA really wants. Uh, SpaceX and Blue Origin pretty famous in the last year going head to head over a moon lander to develop to deliver NASA astronauts there and they they have been uh, getting contracts SpaceX won that contract Blue Origin is contesting uh, as is another company Dynetics but those are contracts that then the taxpayer uh, uh, funds would then kind of go to pay a lot of that uh, uh, going forward um, Virgin Galactic and you know and um, Blue Origin have also been flying experiments for NASA on their vehicle. NASA then pays them for that uh, as part of a, a flight mm. opportunities contract that, that they do. And really key, both Blue Origin and Virgin Gla uh, and SpaceX have uh, agreements in place with the military and the government to use launch sites in Florida. SpaceX launches from the same pad that launched Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin and Mike Collins yeah. to the moon. Uh, and, and they have that for uh, <laughs> decades right now. Uh, and there was a big, a big a kerfuffle between Blue Origin and SpaceX back then too, because Jeff Bezos wanted that one as well. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and now they're going to be launching from the, the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station nearby. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, to a certain degree, when they pay NASA for those services, I, I'm happy because NASA is chronically underfunded, right, and needs yes. more money to actually do things. But those government grants really annoy me when I see these folks walk around and not paying taxes and uh, people in America are still suffering because of that. Um, any other questions before we let yes. go? Yes. So... My battery is a little quickly... low, I should say. So. Okay. 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 We'll get um, the question then. Yes. Yeah, One so... more question. Uh, okay, one more question. Uh, when do you project the cost of space travel will go down? That that is something that I'm very personally interested mm -hmm. in. I'm hopeful. <laughs> I'm hopeful. My you daughter, are. my daughter is 12 years old right now, and I do hope that by the time she is yeah. uh, a young adult or maybe kind of uh, just coming out of college, that that the price of at least a trip to suborbit on Virgin Galactic yeah. Blue Origin will be at a at a range where. Uh, perhaps a family that can afford it can have a once in a lifetime family trip uh, mm -hmm. on uh, on uh, to space right now for about five thousand dollars you can book one one seat on uh, a zero gravity flight with the company mm -hmm. zero gravity mm -hmm. corporation uh, and that's that's a, a whole experience for a day i've done it uh, as part of a, a science team that i was i was following at that time uh, and it was an amazing experience that i've never forgotten mm -hmm. um but it's still five thousand dollars you know which you can use to pay rent for half a year maybe you know mm -hmm. or or uh or um or take your trip your, your family to uh disney world that kind of a thing yeah. um, and and so it needs to be at a scale that a family could be able to do it uh to be really something that for all of us uh, to have kind of a chance at being able to afford. Um, and so I'm, I'm hopeful, you know, in, in 10, 15 years that we'll get there. Um, now, I was hopeful for the same thing for supersonic passenger flight. Uh, and the Concord at that point in time did shut down uh, yeah. uh, in the, the early 2000s. So, um, so we're going to have to really wait and see how this early day yeah. shake out and how they settle on prices, uh, because yeah. that's going to be key. Great. All right, Tark, we're going to let you go so you can like yeah. have the rest of your morning. But thank you so much. This was a really fun chat. Can you please save that audio memo that you have and just uh, you could email it to Ben or drop it in like a Dropbox or something uh, and just get us that file. Uh, I think yeah. WeTransfer is a good one, too. Yeah, yeah, it may okay, end up being too large to yeah, that's true. send as an attachment. So, um, yeah, it would be helpful if you could uh, figure out how to put that on uh, Dropbox. Sherlin can help you out okay. too. Yeah, I was gonna say, Tarek, you can yeah. get in touch with me. Yeah. Okay, great. We, yeah, we I'll, I'll get that to, to you soon. So. Okay. Yay. Yeah. So if you if you save it, you should just like stop the recording. Then it says something like, "Are you done?" or mm -hmm. something, and you say that you're done. Yeah. And then it would be helpful if you could name the file. Yep. Yes. Um, so if you have Google Drive on your phone, you should be able to just share it to your phone, like share yeah. it to Google Drive, and then it'll get dumped there too. So that would be even better. But uh, okay. yeah. and you know what? Mm -hmm. We're so happy that so many people in the chat really liked having you on, Tarek. Oh yeah, so Tarek, we'll yeah. people loved yeah. you. Like, well, really. I can talk about space until the cows come home. Awesome. And probably after that. I remember. Too, so. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, I, 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 if you ever have questions about space, please, please do let me know. Um, we, we've got a lot of fun things coming. We've got uh, Jeff Bezos on that flight coming up. A Boeing. Uh, 
Oh, I think oh. his battery died. Oh, his battery yeah. died. Yeah, maybe. His... <laughs> okay, perfect timing. Sorry, okay, you're yeah, watching this. Time. We love Send him you. A note. Thank you. Send him a note, Trillin, um, saying thank you. I will. But we will, yeah, we will move will. on, folks. Yeah, uh, thank you all for like, all the great questions, too. This was great. Yes. Yeah. Before before anything, quick shout out. Brett Putman is watching, apparently. So hi, Brett. Hey, Brett. Uh, former coworker of ours. And then lots of Wally mentions from Jedi Mind Trick on You and Jonathan Anderson both talking about Wally, which, oh man, such a cute movie. Well, he was so good, but also about like our inability to save this planet. Wait, okay? I know. It's, such a, it's yeah. an Amazon world, basically. It's literally, Amazon. it's a movie about humans escaping Earth. Yeah. Um, okay, we'll and move Hida on. We'll talk about it. just joined. Yeah. Exactly. We'll talk about Windows 365. We got a bunch of other news. Yep. Uh, we don't have to spend too long on any of this stuff because yeah. we had such a yeah. meaty conversation around space. Was, yeah. Uh, yeah. But I, I am interested by Windows 365. So we'll do that. Oh, same. same. I read it. I was like, whoa, okay. Okay, okay, so thanks for the questions, chat. We're going to get back into the actual recording. So we'll be back to talk directly to the chat, I think, after we're done with the rest of this yep. whole thing. So, okay. <clears throat> Let's move on from space and to the cloud, specifically the Microsoft <laughs> cloud. This week, Microsoft <laughs> launched Windows 365. A rumored uh -huh. cloud PC service. We've covered it a couple of months ago, but uh, it, is, it is a full PC. It's a Windows 10 PC that you can um, just subscribe to. Tell Microsoft, like, hey, you want two up to eight virtual CPUs, this amount of RAM Insane. and storage, and just have a computer in the cloud. So wow. I love it. It is it is kind of wild to me. Let's let me just like dive into some of this. Check out my coverage um, about this whole thing because it. I talked with some folks from Microsoft and we got some good answers from them. Uh, but essentially, mm -hmm. this is building on top of Azure Virtual Desktop, which is Microsoft's uh, service for very technical folks. So people who know how to wrangle uh, servers and how to like handle mm -hmm. um, virtual machines um, in the cloud. People could, mm -hmm. they were able to do that for a couple of years, but a normal person just saying, hey, give me a virtual PC, please. Um, that was not possible. So this is kind of right. a simpler way of doing that. We don't know what the prices for this are going to be, but I think essentially for businesses, especially small businesses and enterprises, this could be a good way to, first of all, ensure data security, you know, um, you know employees instead of having a personal computer or an mm -hmm. uh, work computer, um, they could have a personal environment that they could access from shared devices or from their mm -hmm. home computer. No more fighting with VPNs like we have to over here. Everybody <sighs> hates VPNs. Um, yes. Just a computer that is always there, um, apparently never has to shut down. It is always like available in the state it's in, so you can continue mm -hmm. your work easily. It's supported on literally um, virtually any browser too, so you can access this on a Mac. You can access this on an Android tablet. Um, not hard to tell. Like, wow. Eventually, I, I can imagine like um, a dongle for TVs or something where you could just turn any TV or any screen mm -hmm. into a Windows 10 or 11 PC. Like, it'll run Windows 11 when this finally launches. This is kind of a big deal. Maybe not so much mm. for consumers, although a single consumer, you know, a business of one can also uh, subscribe to one of these machines and have access to it. Um, this does seem like bold new territory for Microsoft and the way mm. we think of computers. Uh, what do you think of this, Sherlyn? I mean, I, I think it's pretty mm -hmm. exciting. And I don't know why. I'm a, I'm a normie-ish, I believe. I, I <laughs> think of myself as. And <laughs> the idea of a virtual machine might not seem like you know, crazy useful for someone who already has their own laptop that they store everything on or whatever. Yeah. But like you said, the use cases for an enterprise are huge. Mm -hmm. It's also the, yeah, the persistent state that this thing can remain in across your various devices if you have them. That's super intriguing. Plus, like you said, mm -hmm. browser-based access. So like, again, from Android phone, you can access your Windows PC in the cloud. And if you've yeah. stored... Like, I don't know what their know, phone interface there. is going to be like, but they've talked right, about right, tablet. Right. So they've talked about iPad. They've talked about your Android. They never said I, phone specifically, but you could do it. You could do like Zoom yeah, or something. Yeah. yeah. I also suspect that like, I mean, mm -hmm. the phone thing is more of like a hack thing if you wanted to use the desktop version of a site on your Chrome mobile browser, whatever, Probably. right? But yeah. But if if you, I mean, I suspect there's going to be, I'd be curious about the resource drain, about like what sort of minimum requirements to operate something like that through your browser would be. It's a, so 
it's it's video streaming, you know? So right, exactly. essentially so, these things could be run on Chromebooks. These things could be run yeah. on like really, really lightweight computers. That was, so maybe, that's yeah. Insane. So then maybe- that, that, Goodbye parallels? Like what? <laughs> well, that's, so that's essentially it, right? Like I think parallels and VMware have been the most popular <gasps> virtualization Dude, tools. Right. And parallels was a big thing when uh, Apple moved over to Intel chips around 2005, parallels mm -hmm. came out and they were like, hey, you just want to you want to run windows inside your mac os you can virtualize mm -hmm. it easily through our software and i knew when i was working in it then i i built up parallel installations for a lot of people because back then macs didn't have all the software windows had um so a lot of professors and you know people i worked with wanted to have access to both uh types of software it's the same yeah. thing now like i think virtual machines are really useful if you yes. if you didn't want to install the windows 11 beta on your main pc but you right. wanted to play around with the interface and see how it looked or develop software for it, yeah. you could run it in a virtual PC, um, you know, and just not sacrifice your machine. So putting it in the cloud, I think, makes it even more useful. I think it's it's yeah. just really intriguing. Um, normal people don't need virtual machines, but I think technical right. people, um, especially Mac users, who just like maybe occasionally will need something on Windows or maybe something yeah. their work relies on, that could be good. Um, I could right, see... Right, right organizations giving people Chromebooks uh, or cheaper Windows exactly. laptops right. and then running these things, which will get more power over the cloud. That that could be something because right now yeah. um, the company we work for gives everybody MacBook Pros. And I think well, a lot I of people- a, I got a Dell Latitude. You got, you got a, but essentially PC, like yeah. a $1,000 computer. Everybody gets <gasps> right, like right, a $1,000 right. level computer, right, even if yeah. they probably don't need that much power, right? So something right. like this, they right. can scale between, Microsoft told me there, right now you can configure up to eight virtual CPUs, 16 gigabytes of RAM, 512 gigabytes of storage, um, actually maybe 256 at launch. Uh, but they're right. also working on um, dedicated GPUs. So you can also oh, okay. get like, GPU processing power. Um, wow. This whole thing kind of came about from their early attempts at like building a uh, gaming virtualization too. So they're, they say this is fast enough for video. They're working on tech that will like render the video locally, but still stream mm -hmm. it through the virtual machine. This could be really cool. I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know folks, yeah. but it's launching um, on August 2nd. So we'll see. Mm -hmm. it, an interesting question from the chat that I thought I'd bring up uh, yeah. on our podcast too. Joe Jope or Jojo P uh, asked, does it already include Office on there? I don't um, know. That's a good question, actually. Um, yeah. All I know is it's a virtual PC. Maybe if Microsoft were smart, they would just give you everything. Um, yep. But from what I hear, this is not paying. tied to your, um, it's not tied to your Windows uh, account. So it's like mm -hmm. a completely separate thing. And your purchase, your subscription fee basically includes a Windows license uh, as part of it. Maybe they could have multiple tiers. Like, hey, you want Office in here too? It right. probably would be smart for them to just give you Office if you get one of these. Yeah, yeah, yeah it should be. Um, mm -hmm. But no, this is this is pretty exciting news for sure. Um, <laughs> to, to a certain person, it's very exciting. Yeah, I wish yeah. I had this with when I was an IT guy, basically. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let me do that. Let me wrap this up. <laughs> We'll definitely be following Windows 365. I have not played with it yet, but I'm hoping mm. to uh, closer to August as we as we get there. But uh, listen, apparently a lot of people love Windows. Uh, so I'm glad people have been checking out this coverage. Uh, stay tuned for more on Windows 365 and certainly Windows 11. I cannot wait to get final software on that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's move on to some other news. Sherlyn, I know you had something you really wanted oh, to yeah. dive into. A couple hey, of hey things, speaking yeah. speaking of non-Apple software, <laughs> Android 12 Beta 3 arrived. Oh, what a sexy week. name. Yeah. What? Yeah. I know. Well, listen, they're all beta names are all <laughs> sexy as hell. Um, Android 12 Beta 3 uh, rolled out this week. And what's interesting now, I mean, one of the features it brings is scrolling screenshots. Hooray. Um but sort of almost buried a little bit further down uh, Google's announcement post was that it's bringing enhanced auto rotation. Uh, that's in, okay. in Google's words. But really what this uh, feature does is instead of just relying on your accelerometer and gyroscope to figure out how you're holding up your phone, mm -hmm. it's actually going to tap your camera to see your face and be like, oh, you know, this person's holding up the phone in a landscape mode because their eyes are here and their nose is here, et cetera, et cetera, right? So it's a camera-based auto-rotation tool 
to, I guess, complement what already exists uh, okay. to make auto rotate a bit faster, but also a bit more accurate for instances when you're lying on your couch, um, you're I don't know doing holding a plank and somehow still looking at your phone. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I can't think of many other use cases than lying on your couch and in your bed. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, so it's really looking... And it could just make that that auto-rotate a bit more accurate too. So is this but, more like if, you, if you're if you shooting a video and you want to know if you're actually in TikTok mode versus YouTube mode? Like, is that what's happening? Or is it just it's, it's, uh, more viewing? It's not, I don't... It could be for both, but I think okay. personally for me, when I use auto rotate, it's from from viewing, right? So like when you no. flip your phone over to maximize a YouTube screen, or when mm -hmm. you're using an app and your you know, or a browser, you know, and you want to see the website wider or something, um, and you flip your phone. Um, I mean, that's how I imagine the use case would be. But also, yeah, it could totally be used for when you're shooting mm -hmm. something. <laughs> it's it's I I think it's uh weird. <laughs> If you were shooting a, I don't think it'd be able to auto rotate using your camera uh -huh. if your camera was already in use for something right, else. Right, right, so. right. I just, uh, I feel like we're gonna have a long walk this year towards you trying to make Android 12 seem like an interesting or exciting yeah, update. Yeah, yeah. Android 12. Um, yeah. Material <laughs> U is really exciting. I will say, I've been, I've been yes, living Material with U. The, yeah. yeah, I've been living with the Android 12 beta and the iOS 15 betas. I, I have, I could go deep into like the differences yeah. between Android and iOS as main devices, but I will say that there are some quirks I'm not a big fan of. This thing though, camera based auto rotation here might give people some discomfort because it is, you know, using your camera, it is looking mm -hmm. for your face. Uh, yeah. But Google did say that, you know, all this is happening in its private compute core. So the images are not being stored anywhere and they're not sent anywhere. Uh, they're really just, you know, temporarily being used to see how you're holding your phone up. So hopefully that gives some people some assurance. Um, I'd love to see if they enable, like they give people the option to kill or not use this. Um, and also it'll sure. only be available on Pixel 4 and older. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, newer, sorry, Pixel 4 and newer. So it requires some sort of higher end hardware. Anyhow, okay. uh, Beta 3 has some other features that I go into detail on our article on Engadget.com. You can check it out there. Um, yeah, I mean, if you if you already have the beta, cool. If not, this is just a tease of what's coming up when gotcha. beta Android 12 rolls out. Yeah. You also covered uh, the Biden uh, executive, order executive order from last, last week that uh, covered big tech and net neutrality Indeed. and uh, right to repair and a bunch of different things. Mm -hmm. What is mm -hmm. so? What's going on there? You know, what's your big yeah. takeaway? Because it seems very exciting just to have actual right to repair rules. I know it's a uh, huh. I, I I drafted a tweet in my head and never posted this, but, <laughs> but okay. So this is an executive order that Biden signed on Friday, and it's huge. It's got like what something like seventy two different suggestions and actions, uh, spanning a dozen federal agencies, including the FTC, FCC, etc., um, and big tech companies. So a lot of the, um, you know, what's relevant to Engadget here are things that are about tech companies and anti-competitive behavior, antitrust and net neutrality. One thing that uh, Biden in the executive order suggested, I mean, it's all suggestions right now, right? Until they, until they like mm -hmm. work with the agencies to make all of that happen. But it asked the FCC to restore net neutrality rules that were undone by the prior administration. Uh, not naming names here, guys, but yeah, <laughs> um, you know, and also important things. I, I, I've okay. My main takeaway is that like Biden and his team and his administration were like listening to all the common complaints people have about sure. unnecessary unnecessary early termination fees, and they they have smart people like on the FTC now who can like actually bring a lot of these topics up. Yeah. Exactly. So things that are being addressed here are like, like I said, the early uh, termination fees, excessive fees, um, anti-competitive behavior, like, you know, Lena Khan's been in the news a lot lately. So, you know, this is something that she's been talking about, too, I think. Um, but also as, uh, you know, the order also asks the FTC to establish rules on surveillance and accumulating data, uh, data um, and letting you do your own repairs of your devices and equipment, not just in tech, but also in agriculture and farming where mm -hmm. <laughs> people want the right to repair their John Deere equipment yeah, or their yeah. tractors. That's kind of where all this started is because um, farmers and agriculture are people there are used to repairing big machines. These aren't like, right. it. these are like old school 
you know, vehicles. It's not like cars where there are tons of microchips and stuff now. It's really hard to repair. A tractor has kind of worked the same way for a while. So, hey, this right. is good. I hope we can stick right. with this. Mm -hmm. So, so I think this, if anything, this executive order, uh, of course, it'll take some time before all of the actions can, come to pass. But yeah. I, I do think it shows an understanding of what's broken in the system here. They talk about things like, uh, it, you know, in the transportation section, uh, they talk about airlines uh, asking for more transparency and disclosure over baggage fees, change fees, good, cancellation good. fees, and, you know, asking airlines to give clearer guidelines mm -hmm. on when it will refute refund yeah. uh, issue refunds for things like not working wi-fi or in flying there are so many fishing they're really fishy things a lot of big companies get yeah. to deal with uh I'll, I'll tell you guys a quick story uh natural gas in georgia mm -hmm. is an unregulated market so it's insane it is the wild mm -hmm. west there are like a ton of companies I, I could potentially subscribe to but uh they do this thing where if you don't subscribe to a fixed rate they do uh a thing that they they say they send you on a variable gas rate which really? could easily be five to 10 times more, but they don't tell you. Like it's very untransparent. Right. So basically over the weekend, my gas bill shot up like five times. I was like, what is happening? They never mentioned the things that shifted. And I called in to fix that and get a lower rate. It took three months for that to apply. Meanwhile, they could like keep charging me at the higher rate. There's so many things going on with yep. uh, all yep. sorts of companies and industries in America where it's yep. just like, unfair and insane so i hope we can like yep. do something about this yeah yeah so this this covers industries like healthcare as well yep. where we know and have talked about before the infrastructure in america is really broken so yep yep let's see how this plays out we will keep an eye on it um but but let's talk about uh we, we things that people need and want and complain about right the apple uh mac os monterey beta Right, which uh, <laughs> I, I previewed, yeah. You previewed. You hated one thing about the Safari redesign of Android. I, I didn't necessarily it hate, but it was it was not great. So they simplified okay. Safari by uh, basically shoving the tabs and the menus and everything up to one toolbar at mm -hmm. the top of, sc of the screen. But mm -hmm. very quickly, like after six or seven tabs, they would just become meaningless, like hard to read. They would just be little icons. That's something that happens on every computer, but it usually takes me like 10 to 15 tabs, you know, especially on a MacBook. Yeah. Um, so that was crazy. And I didn't think they yeah. could stick with that. And apparently they're not, right? Yeah, yeah. They're bringing it back. They're, they're no <laughs> longer getting rid of it by default uh, or just fully getting rid of it. They're bringing it back. You it, it, Now it's back by default and you have the option to hide. So there is a tabs more. bar now below yeah. the address bar which allows yeah, more room to show tabs because we're all tabs addicts. Come on. What, yes, do, you think, yes. what do you think we are, Apple? We no. did Marie Kondo our browsers? Come on. <laughs> They're like, no we way. give you tab groups. Just organize <laughs> all your stuff into tab groups. Nobody <laughs> wants to do that. We're lazy nope. and we just fill our browsers until they can't take it anymore. Yep. Then we open a new window and we do it again yep. because we're uh, exactly. monsters. Recategorize all that. Re restart all <laughs> that. Uh, I have session managers for this reason. So um, that was a nice thing to see apple kind of take heed and and change while it is still in the beta mm -hmm. rollout situation um or beta testing situation so you know when mac os monterey does eventually officially launch it, it was the same guy who was like we, we got to put the mouse charging cable at the bottom of the mouse people it is the cleanest most beautiful oh. most design friendly way like that apple sometimes makes those boneheaded decisions that's just for design like this looks great in a screenshot when we show it at wwdc <laughs> But actually using it, no, 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 no. Oi, oi. Oi, no. Uh, give us something fun, Trillin. I know you had a fun speaking, story. Speaking here. of wacky design ideas, Tag Heuer, we all know mm -hmm. and love <clears throat> this company for its connected line of smartwatches <laughs> that cost $1,800 or more. These are Wear OS watches with the Tag mm -hmm. Heuer branding that cost $2,000. Anyhow, oh, I this want week this the one. company... Yeah. collaborated with uh, Nintendo to make a Super Mario themed version of its connected smartwatch. So This looks really good. I mean, it does look nice. I'll it give you that. Really <laughs> but if you're a Super Mario fan, it will cost $2150, $2150 for a uh. Tag or a Mario connected watch running Wear OS with something. And they're only making 2,000 of these, so it's not like it's yes. going to get cheaper. It's only going to get no. rarer, basically. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, it's uh, it's a limited supply. It's available today. Uh, and okay, so I mean, do I really? So okay, in addition to what like M embossed or engraved in the knob and on the underside and on the clasp, you know, some sort of those hardware touches, mm -hmm. you also see customized watch faces that feature Mario and Mario Universe item items like the the mushroom, the. I mean, some of the floating elements in the titles and stuff like that. You'll have four new watch faces to choose from. Sure. The other thing they're doing is using Mario <laughs> to encourage you to stay active because a not a, <laughs> which this this is why I thought. Does it so say Wahoo every time up. you jump? Because I would kind of uh, like that. It wouldn't. Yeah. I don't think it says it out loud, but it does like have. Does it play a Mario like, running noise animation. when you run real fast? Like I, I would, I would kind of love that. To be clear, I haven't seen this in person. They were supposed mm. to show me one <laughs> in person. Still haven't. Anyhow. Um, Anyhow. What, so th this is I... from a line of watches, by the way, that starts at $1,800. So this starts, you know, th yeah. this initially, this entire line that Tag Hauer was yeah. dealing with is, is far more than the Apple uh, crazy leather well, one, right? When, yeah. when it first came out, this line started at $2,000. The yeah. 1800 yeah. is a price dip. That just yep. started recently. The Apple Watch, uh, the Series 5 Hermes Apple Watch costs $1,500. So this is like a level yeah. of smartwatch yeah. world that I just never want to deal with. It is it is tag. It's really just tag. It's a, it's a whole mm -hmm. watch world. It's not even just a smart watch. It's a watch world, right? There's a lot of watches out there that cost a ton of money. And this is firmly in that. Like a, almost not a Rolex level, but... You know, uh -huh. sort of that world. Anyhow, mm -hmm. um, um, the animations, yeah, they, they, if you achieve your steps goals on 25, 50, 75, and 100% throughout the day, you'll get different animations. You get like the superstar, the super mushroom, the gold pole, et cetera. Um, so, I, I, I mean, that's pretty much it. The watch faces of these animations and the hardware that I discussed earlier, they are your distinction from the regular tag hoyer connected which by the way the company was also like uh we uh we might we might consider making these watch faces and animations available on other editions of the tag hoyer connected at a later stage why this should be an apple watch face like just give me yeah. give me an apple watch face with mario characters that's all i i spent way too much money for my apple watch series 4 when that came out <laughs> and uh yeah I, I want some new character watch faces please okay you know yeah, you never know. Nintendo should do that. But when when Tag Warrior pitched me this, they were like, "We're teaming up with a Japanese cartoon character." I'll say, "Pokemon Pikachu," but no, Pikachu. It's Mario. Um, which is also okay. A Pikachu watch it. face, I, I think could do really well. And yeah. if you oh, yeah. if you sit too long, it'll jolt you. If yeah. You need to move. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay, I'd be down. So please stand <laughs> up, jolt. <laughs> okay, let's move on to what we've been working on. What we've been working on. Uh, mm -hmm. I am still working on the Vive Pro 2 review because I, I have had no time. Uh, I did mm -hmm. finish my Vive Focus 3 review, which I found to be like a good standalone headset. To be honest, a very comfortable and high quality one. But that thing is $1,300. And Ooh. no, don't buy that if you have if you can get the Oculus Quest 2 for $300. Uh, Vive Crazy. is strictly for businesses right now. So cool tech, but not for you. I'm also testing out the 2021 Prius Prime as a family car. Hmm. Uh, I, I want to get like more hands-on time with the new electrics or plug-in hybrids as this is. So this has like 30 to 35 miles of electric drive uh, along with mm -hmm. you know, a normal gas engine. So I'm, I'm enjoying it so far. Uh, as a mm -hmm. family car, though, I, I think it kind of fails. And I'll get into that in my eventual coverage. The trunk is tiny, and this thing could barely <laughs> fit one car seat. So, you know. Uh, this is why parents uh, typically go for bigger cars. I think you, you gotta, you got so much junk with kids. You, you got so strollers, you got bags, yep. you got things you just got to carry around at all times. Sherlyn, what are you working on? I am. Well, in addition to everything I talked about, all those stories, um, by by the end of this podcast, you'll see on the Engadget website, a story I've been working on about accessibility as well. Um, I am still sort of under embargo so i'm not going to give you more details than that but please do check out engadget.com shortly um yeah it's fine and, and then and then hey next week i will be off on some break uh some time off and break. i am looking forward to it uh it doesn't mean that i so yeah i'm prepping some work ahead of time for that week because that's there is uh, what you have to do before every vacation is do extra work <laughs> exactly the and then after work. when you come back is to climb back Ugh. 
I'll put okay. it up with a pile. Yep. Yes. Yep. There you go. Enjoy your time off, Sherlyn. Everybody, uh, tell Sherlyn how to relax, please. You can tweet at her. Give her some I'm suggestions and shows. I think. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, I feel like if I leave you, if, if I say relax, you will find the a game to play for 12 hours straight Ooh. without eating or sleeping. Yeah. It's just Which true. Is I've fine. given up on Wheel it's of sure. Fortune, but <laughs> <laughs> it pissed me off too much. Yes. Let's move on to our pop culture picks. How about that? What are yes. you, what are you yeah, taking okay. a break with now, pop culture wise? Yeah. So, um, I mean, it changes. But anyhow, uh, a few things to shout out before I give you my actual recommendation. One, uh, this movie called Coda that we saw around mm-hmm. the time of Sundance uh, is now released on Apple TV+. Plus. Is it, is it out? out? Good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it, I believe it's out. I've been seeing, yeah, it kept saying play now or whatever. It was really good. It's about um, uh, uh, CODA has a double meaning here. It's CODA. No, it's, no, no. CODA is coming of, oh. August 13th. I will not let you do another one of those Hill House Damn things. It. Okay, trailer. it's coming on August 13th. You can play the Apple trailer on Apple TV okay. Plus right now. But That's what it's asking can, you to play. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> keep an eye out for it August 13th uh, yes. on Apple TV Plus. And you watched oh, it, right? Like I said before. I yep. watched it uh, at Sundance and uh, CODA stands for a section in music, but also stands for child of death adults. Um, death it's adults. Good. So mm-hmm. it's really, really an important story to tell too. I think in this, in this country <laughs> or in this world, uh, yeah. but also kind of a typical um, coming of age story. So, mm-hmm. and then uh, shout out that Loki was awesome. So, Oh had- man. Yeah. And yeah, we can talk about it next time. But well, yeah, that that'll require a spoiler cast. But uh, that that was a pretty good finale. Yeah, we'll, Finally, we'll yeah. an MCU TV series has a good ending because yeah, uh, I, I think certainly Captain uh, Cap, uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier fell the apart Soldier, yeah. Yeah. immediately, yeah. and then WandaVision hit or miss. I think for the ending, but I like yeah. most of WandaVision. Yeah, Loki was exactly. just great throughout. Yeah, Loki was nonstop great. Anyhow, so mm-hmm. my actual recommendation, though, this is one that the Vinter's gonna laugh at me for oh, because boy. Uh, it's, uh, it's debatable how good this is. <laughs> so we were talking about uh, all these like post lost um, TV shows. You're gonna very, talk like, about Manifest. Christian. No, no, I already talked about Manifest. Yeah. Now, after I finished Manifest, I had to find another show in the similar thread or similar. You style. had to, or because there was against yeah. your head. Because that was like no, I wanted to. Uh-huh. Uh, so I, I found. On Hulu, this show called Debris. <laughs> Another one Debris. word, just yeah. like thing just happening. Random. In Debris, yeah. listen to listen to what's happening. In <sighs> Debris. Uh, I know what's happening in, in Debris, but yeah, tell oh, us. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. An alien spacecraft was seen or captured through a space camera or something floating near Earth or just zooming by Earth. But then like yeah. the debris from that ravaged spacecraft has been dropping down to our planet yeah. for for the months after and it's a cool they concept. all have special yeah. properties yes it's a very cool concept science fiction wise what an interesting concept but they i watched all have... the pilot for this but it's it's uh i ahead. know it doesn't it doesn't it, it's kind of i've read some of the reviews for it that i agree with which is that they're building a story between the characters that actually doesn't play out that effectively they should have just mm-hmm. focused on the episodic hey here's the mystery of the week in the, the characters suck. About the they're just not interesting they're just too caught up in their own uh, on Yeah, it's, it's annoying a little bit for that. So I skip all of that and I just watch it for the mystery because they do come up with these clever scenarios. It's sure. it's hard to watch a movie, uh, a show that kind of like does itself dirty like this. But I, I mean, it's <laughs> no, I, it's I, hard I, I to watch, but you will keep watching. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, I I love the I love this. No, I love the science fiction of it. Um, but sure, I just ignore sure. the character talky bits. Did you ever uh, watch the, Lynn, uh the original, like the X Files? Did you ever watch? Yeah, original X Files seen- back in the day. Yeah, well, not back in the day. I watched it like a few years ago. Okay. Um, that first season up. of X Files, I feel like everybody compares everything to Lost, but it's really that first season of X Files and the way they built those characters and the mystery and the episodic right. stuff. Like, I think everything has tried to like yeah. mimic that in certain ways. Yeah. yeah. Um, speaking of Lost, I also just started watching season one onwards, like in in order, because I used to just Good. watch it when it was on TV. So now I'm on Lost. So there you go. Anyway, how about you? What are you telling people to watch? I saw your recommendation and I agreed with it. A couple of things. Yeah, you'd probably like. Uh, I started watching Wellington Paranormal, yes. which is this fun yes. show. It is on HBO Max. It is a spinoff a of uh, We Live in the Shadows, but it's a spinoff of the We Live in the Shadows movie. So mm. it's like, it's very like dry New Zealand homer. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah, what we do in the shadows. 
So I started watching Wellington Paranormal, which is a spinoff of What We Do in the Shadows, that fun New Zealand horror movie that has its own TV adaptation right now. Right. But I think the TV adaptation of What We Do in the Shadows is a little more American, like a little more like overtly funny. This one, this show is more like dry New Zealand humor. And mm -hmm. I, I'm kind of digging it. It is just like two cops. Uh, they just they specifically call themselves Mulder and Scully who go around um in like a uh you know mockumentary style but go around solving supernatural mysteries you know there there's oh. potential like ghosts there's potential people being yeah. possessed and vampires and whatnot all around this new zealand town it is really chill apparently the show's from like 2018 and only recently i didn't came to hbo max so yeah it's good i, I just, dig it. i just saw this uh thing appear on screen uh mm -hmm. i didn't realize taika waititi was involved i mean it's his it's his series yeah it's yeah he's, so he's there involved you go. Wow, yeah but it's very much, uh, yeah, New Zealand style dry humor is not like the American show that is a lot more like, I think, overtly funny and has like just more going on. It's like sharper writing. Uh, anyway, I'm digging Wellington Paranormal. It is a good, mm. uh, it's a good like chill supernatural thing. I'm also watching this new anime series called, called Godzilla Singular Point. Um, this is my like, I guess I've given up Sherlin type of show um in that it is uh listen i saw the trailer for this and i saw godzilla i saw really good animation uh bones is one of the animation studios and they've been involved like with some of my favorite shows of the year so it is about um you know two like young adults one is a researcher i think like a researcher mm -hmm. of like paranormal type events and the other is somebody who's helping to develop this like little this like robot thing who's also like exploring uh these extra terrestrial or intraterrestrial creatures it's a godzilla show where godzilla doesn't show up until like halfway through the entire season but i think it's really interesting because it takes like an evangelian approach to um you know how would science like how would actual scientists like go about finding creatures like this you you get some of the like mm -hmm. traditional uh, Godzilla creatures but they don't look the same there's a lot of like metaphysics involved uh, the show's written by somebody who basically used to be an engineer so it's like really technical and detailed at times too so I'm digging it sometimes I just want my giant monsters and uh, you know I, I think this is a good one even if Godzilla is not in it much is a really good looking show so mm. I just want to shout it out for that like finding good anime is hard these days I also watched the Tomorrow War and we uh, we did a spoiler review on the Slash Film cast for that. Um, this show is dumb. Like, this movie is really dumb. It's really it's, dumb, but it's competently made, right? Like, it is... Enjoyably dumb well to me. Like, made, I thought it was enjoyable. It's skillfully made to a certain degree. So you're like, sure, it's always, like, making you feel dumb as an audience member. But <laughs> I think the set pieces look good. The monsters look good. Uh, I hate right. Chris Pratt in this. Um, a lot of things I, still don't make sense. Like the actual setup yeah. of this entire world doesn't make sense. But what I've realized watching this, um, this is a movie where people from the future come to the past to mm -hmm, tell people mm -hmm, to come fight our future mm -hmm. wars because apparently you're just going to sacrifice yourself for the future. Nothing makes sense. Uh, yeah. But one one little spoiler thing I will say here is that uh, this is basically the Terminator future transport in like hyperdrive, right? They can like transport groups of people back and forth but when they send people into the yeah, future they just like drop them into the middle yep. of nowhere so like so half funny. of the people they transport back just die because you've yep. been transported 50 feet into the air off the side of a building you just die that's it mm -hmm. that's your contribution to the tomorrow war mm -hmm. um it is also kind of funny no, it's basically still. like it is player unknown battlegrounds the movie because they also <laughs> send like just random people dress in their like office work equipment you know just like in their business clothes to go fight the future war so it looks hilarious and it's kind of dumb it's a video game movie but it's also oh, yeah. incredibly dumb and i just could not did you like I, the I really I, my one of my favorite moments was near the end where like chris pratt just shouts die I was sure. like, yes! that was sure. like oh my god so <laughs> stupid <laughs> so good. Very dumb. Very dumb. Everybody watch Wellington that. Paranormal. That is my best suggestion so far this week. Speaking, Anything else you want to add? Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of a movie that was previously recommended on this show that we've see since seen, mm -hmm. uh, I watched Stowaway that you recommended a long time ago yes, or good. a few weeks ago, The Vendros. It was not the movie I was expecting, but it was pretty good. Definitely. Yeah. Like good drama, good space drama. Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah, we should have asked Tarek about that because that show, yeah. that movie also tried to be very accurate in terms of what it was trying to do. 
But right. cool. I think uh, I think you can wrap whenever you're ready. Ben, do we have a clean wrap? We good? Uh, yeah, I think it's clean enough. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, that's it for the episode this week, everyone. Thank you, as always, for listening. Our theme music is by game composer Dale North. Our outro music is by our very own Terrence O'Brien. The podcast is produced by Ben Elman. You can find Davindra online at... At Davindra on Twitter and at the Filmcast. We have changed our name. We are now just the Filmcast at thefilmcast.com. You can find us on Audio Boom and on Patreon. Uh, yeah, we, we, we've had an amicable separation from FlashFilm.com. But uh, yeah, check us oh. out. We're going independent, baby. Look at that. Well, if you want to tell me how to relax and are prepared for me to ignore you all week next week, I'm at Sherlyn Lowe on Twitter. Email us your thoughts at podcast.engadget.com. Leave us a review, please, on iTunes. And subscribe on anything that gets podcasts, including Spotify. Okay, done with the the episode. Mm -hmm. Uh, Time to talk to the audience. I need to put something on my laptop all right um <laughs> so, hello to d-man acbc i think will so is a little late but hello hello yeah, Rush if here. you want to ask about anything if you want to talk about uh windows 365 if you want to talk about um uh, just random tech stuff buying guides anything like that this is our time to talk to the chat that is just really unstructured. Wait, um, why are people calling me a pro gamer now? I didn't. <laughs> I, I think that's a it's a joke, right? Well, yeah, I think oh. I think it has gone from are we going to make Sherlyn a gamer to begin with to Sherlyn oh, already we a pro fortune. gamer. <laughs> no, because I I think we were talking about Wheel of Fortune and Jonathan Anderson. No, wait, Jedi Mind Trick on you said play Solitaire on my Switch. I'm like, oh, okay, that's a that's an upgrade. Yeah. So, uh, one question that I uh, saved from Kunpati uh, asks Sherlyn specifically: What brand of eyeliner do you use? Oh, okay. So I don't know yeah, if they're still I... watching, but. Oh, I mean, if you're still watching. So the problem is that I'm not just using eyeliner. I'm also using magnetic eyeliner. Mm-hmm. Um, I've written about magnetic eyeliner and eyelashes <laughs> on Engadget.com, actually, where mm-hmm. like the eyeliner itself like lays a base of a magnetic surface and then you put the eyelashes onto that base so you don't have to deal with glue. What? Like, glue That's wild. Off. It's Yeah, I've been using them for like two years now. They're the best. Like cool. I've cool. played Very with cool. stupid magnetic eyelashes where there's two pieces and it like just... <laughs> clips onto your eyelash <laughs> itself like that and that's dumb as fuck that's yeah that's so but mm. yeah this i yeah. would and the, the brand of... i use is called glamnetic glamnetic mm-hmm. eyeliner cool. okay yeah. i would be kind of scared that like whatever this ferrous material is wouldn't be so good for putting it next to my eye but mm. it's fine yeah I know we we have years. noticed Sherlyn's like slow decline over the past couple of years. <laughs> totally, <so. laughs> it's just true. My face has been deteriorating. Uh, well, it's, it's like not, when you, when you have too much uh, too much it's, lead. Yeah, yeah, your yeah, you, your <laughs> eyelid is close to your eye. Your eye is mm-hmm. close to your brain. That's what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah, yes, and we bad. can we can yeah. go look at the ingredients and talk about that all day. Yes, there's so much. Okay. Do you guys know small planes still use leaded fuel? Which is Wait, wild seriously? to me. Like Ooh, they're Christmas? spewing lead into the air. There are so, so many stories about like if you live near a small plane airport, you are screwed because they're just spitting lead out onto that your. That is a it's good insane. thing to know. Yeah, that's, a, that's no, good to know. Don't mess around small plane airports. Not gonna fl- yep, yeah. not gonna do that. Uh, shout out to Jimin. Chong Chong, uh, who says, hi, I'm Ming from Hong Kong. It's my first time listening to this live today. Hey, we love newcomers. Hey. Hi. Uh, if you're from Hong Kong, I, I mean, you speak Cantonese, so <laughs> I was going to uh, say Huning, but never Mark mind. Dell says MagSafe eyes. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> it's, it's true. There we go. No, they're not that strong. They're that's strong cool enough thing, for the though. tiny magnets on the eyelashes. But that's you should just it. keep up on the BD Tech beat. Like, I really like the, the Dyson straightener. Yes. Looks really, yes. really interesting. The $500 I, I mean, no. straightener. Yeah. Yeah, I covered like a dumbass smart mask uh, a while ago. Not great. ACBC, is that magnetic eyeliner thing compatible with Android? You guys, come on. 
<laughs> you're making fun of this thing that's actually pretty cool yeah i mean it is pretty cool i i find it a little bit scary though just because like how long did it you know what i feel like johnson women and johnson have, like worse cop- things on our eyes and skin over well the yes years. but um, oh, that's exactly what I, was, what I was saying how did how long did it take johnson and johnson to cop to the fact that baby powder was giving people cancer there you go mm-hmm, mm-hmm. well and then they spent decades just avoiding it too it's just mm. Can't trust these companies. Can't trust these billionaire companies. Uh-huh. So, uh, let me see. Uh, Deepak asks, am I Indian? Love from India. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I, and- my family's from India, but I was actually born in South America. So I'm, I'm Caribbean more than Indian. Yeah, and Deepak also diaspora. asked if you have any suggestions for uh, Indian web series or no. like any Sorry, I don't. Indian television. I don't. I Aww. do not. Sorry. Um, I watched some Bollywood, but not much, yeah. Back to the magnetic eyeliner for a sec, because y'all made me do this. (laughs) That's your, Um, this is your, yeah, go. It contains iron oxides that are FDA approved and non-toxic, meaning it is supposedly safe to use around your eyes. Um, Yeah, it's saying that. So many many things are federally approved until enough people start getting sick from them. (laughs) True, true. I mean, I don't yeah. count. I don't consider the FDA approval yeah. as like a, a yeah. brand or stamp. Thank you for being a beta tester, Sherlyn. We'll <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Beta tester with your eyes. Yeah. Uh, when y'all die of other things like uh, smoking or cigarettes, let me know, man. I mean, also not what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so we've got uh, Chi Ming Chung that asks, mm. uh, what about the accessibility features in Windows 365? Now, my just general guess would be that mm-hmm. it would be the same exact accessibility features as in Windows 10 I and did, Windows Yeah, 11. so it can, it can access like local devices, so it can access the microphone on your device, I believe. That's a, a virtual machines basically can just pass yeah, through all the hardware. So should be fine. Uh, Windows 11 also has good like auto tra- uh, <laughs> dictation. Yeah, we're going over the Sherlyn Beauty Shop now uh, oh before her eyelids melt. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Da, 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 da. <laughs> that was cringe, 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 cringe. Um, oh, but yeah, accessibility should be honestly accessibility should be better with Windows 365 just because you can get to it from anywhere. You don't have to like roll up to a laptop or something too. Or desktop. So if you already have like mm-hmm. a device with switch control built in and all that, mm-hmm. um, if you already have it set up with your screen reader, hopefully it'll be able to communicate with the elements properly. It's, That's it's, yeah, I hope they're working on that stuff. Yeah. It, they, yeah. If if it's browser based, too, sometimes it's up to the browser. Like for us, like um, some players on certain websites that are embedded in certain articles, the the labels are not used like labeled correctly for screen readers. But sometimes it's not the site owner. It's sometimes the uh, embedded stuff that they're using. Yeah. Right? The widget that yeah. they're using is not labeled right. So or it's hard to or know yeah. at the moment Yeah, um, how that plays out until we see it. All right. Let's see. I think we are good. Yeah. For questions, uh, people apparently love you, Sherlyn. So there's your, your fan club for the day. Yeah. <laughs> who said idea oh jenna my intro you said idea uh this is that's mm. smart. thank you all for uh i'm just <laughs> awkward now just away away <laughs> shirlin is now microphone just fully microphone all right thank you folks yep. i think we are good to wrap <laughs> okay we're, we're just gonna yes. go unless anybody has questions or you guys want to say anything mm, no i think we, we had a lot yeah. of chat around space but that's Thank you guys for joining us about space. For sure. For space, sure. space. Mm. Yeah, I, the chat is already saying like, great pod, like, thanks. And so it's, it feels like we're getting the shepherd's Natural crook yeah. please, from please. the variety show. Just like pull us off the stage. So yeah, please. thank you everybody for watching. This stream comes to you via our video team, which is led by Kyle Mock with Julio Barrientos and Luke Brooks. But again, it's powered by everyone in the chat. It's so much fun talking with everyone. You are the ones who just like bring in so many interesting points of view and uh, just give some good variation to the chat. Yeah, it's good. It it helps spice up the conversation, to be honest. I love it. it. 
it gives yes it gives more seasoning to the conversation mm -hmm. which is really good um uh, again if you've stuck around this long you know that algorithms are important rate us on itunes come on people only usually only do it when they're mad about something be happy about this podcast and give us a good rating um and we'll see you next week thanks folks thanks avinash mandala <laughs>